guys, how are you today? Today we are going to continue with our classes, but we are going to change the book, okay? We are no longer going to use um, Poliedro. Now we are going to go for our Oxford book, okay? I would like you please to, let me make this smaller. I would like you please to go to unit 2B, Older and Wiser. Uh, the main topic of this unit then is going to be uh, getting old, being young, the difference. Does it make a difference if you're old, if you're young? Okay. The first thing I want, uh, never mind, let me give you some, let me tell you something else before. Okay. So I'm going to go through the exercises with you and it's going to be a little different, the dynamics, because Oxford actually requires a lot of interaction and talk, which is something that we're not going to be able to have here. Uh, so I'm going to do the talking. I'm going to ask you some questions. The questions, if you like, it's important for you to share your opinion. I would like you to maybe write it on a forum or we can actually discuss them and we are going to discuss them during our lives. OK, so the topic is going to be the questions I'm going to be asking it here. And uh, throughout other moments, I'm going to ask you to stop the video, do the exercises yourself, and then press play so you can check your answers and we can move on, okay? Um, so that's it. Now we can start. So unit two, if you, uh, to be, if you take a look at the title, it's going to be older and wiser. The first thing that we are going to, to look at Oh, me and this. Okay, there we go. The th first thing that we're going to look at is this speaking part. Here, they have brought some adjectives, and these adjectives, they can be used to describe people. What we want you to do is to make a list. Which adjectives do you think belong or describe teenagers? And which ones do you think would describe elderly people? Okay, guys, take a look here very quickly. Older old and elderly they mean the same okay um the they elderly though has a more positive connotation it's uh it's more polite it's just like in portuguese velho e idoso for example for my mom she says that old is not nice to use for people because it seems like it's something you can throw away at any time because you don't need it anymore so she prefers the word elderly Okay, so she considers it to be more polite. That is the case, and it depends on who's using the word to for you to see if it's uh, okay to use one or the other. But um, in terms of dictionary, they do mean the same. They're synonyms. So what I want you to do now, and then um, you stop the video, do your list. There is no right or wrong because this is your opinion, okay? You're just going to make... Um, a list which adjectives you think describe old people and which ones you think describe teenagers so absent-minded adventurous bad-tempered clumsy kind lazy moody narrow-minded self-centered stubborn enthusiastic vulnerable weak and wise so for example i think that teenagers are lazier than adults they're lazier than young than old people it seems like everything is more difficult for them to do and i think that most of the times and let's make sure we don't say it always most of the times uh old people they are wiser because they have had more life experience than teenagers teenagers um haven't experienced much okay so i i would put these um sentences here these adjectives here but i want you to continue and finish the list okay so my question for you and i would like you to think of these and um, for us to talk about next week is this one do you think that uh, what you just did, this list that you just did, is it accurate? Is it a, 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 a depiction of the reality? Or do you think they are based on stereotypes? Which of these adjectives would you say, no, yeah, no, I, I do think this is okay and this is true. And which ones do you go like, oh, hold on. 
Yeah, I don't think this is true. I think this is just a stereotype of how teenagers should be and how old people should be, but that's not a reality. I know this person that's very much different. Which ones, okay? I want you to think about it so we can discuss. And look at number three as well. Do you know people in these two stages, just two ages, do they conform to the stereotypes or do they don't conform to the stereotypes? And how? How would you say that um, they, they are different from what we have uh, been looking at? Okay, so now I actually want you to look and let me zoom out here a little bit and let me put myself here so you can... I can. Okay, so can you look at this picture? Remember that when we talk about when we talked about reading strategies, one of the reading strategies I think I'm pretty sure we talked about it is um, that every time we have a text and the text comes with a picture, this picture has to do with the text. It's not there just to to make it pretty and it has no connection whatsoever. That is not true. So every time you look at the title and at the picture and at text, they are all connected. So look here, we do have the, uh, the picture of apparently two old people. And why do I say apparently? Because look at the title, trading ages. If I'm trading ages, Mm, are they actually the age they seem to be in the picture? And if you go further down a little bit, we have a subheading for a BBC TV documentary, 29-year-old Carolyn Bell and 32-year-old Nick Sidney experienced what it was like to be old. So look, they're not actually old, but they were disguised, they were makeup, they were things that made them look old. So this is very important for you to pay attention. Every time um, that you are uh, reading a text, that you are um, trying to solve a problem, uh, answering an exercise, observe headings, pictures, and subheadings because they are all connected and they are going to help you um, uh, preview and um, yeah, guess what's going to be on the text, okay? So this text specifically, and I'm going to, to read it, and I'm going to read it with you. Now open up your books. Look, it took five hours every morning to make Carolyn and Nick look like elderly people in their 70s. They were given synthetic wrinkled skin, false teeth, gray wigs, they also wore body suits to make them look fatter and contact lenses to make their eyes look older. The discomfort of the makeup, the heavy suits and the contact lenses which made their eyesight worse gave them a small taste of the physical problems of old age. They were also coached to walk and speak like people in their 70s. Then they had to leave each day for one month as an old person with a video diary to record their experiences and hidden cameras to record how other people reacted to them. Guys, would you take part in an experience like that? Would you be willing to walk on somebody else's shoes and see what it is and experience what it is to be somebody that you're not? Or do you think that's not necessary um, to actually empathize with others? Do you think that empathy comes naturally or is it something we have to exercise over time? What do you think? Let's listen. Let's listen. I'm sorry. Let's read the second part of the text, okay? We are going to skip these questions because they are for you to exercise and read it with a partner, which we can't do it right now, okay? So we're going to actually skip to the text. Right now, I want you to pay attention. Okay, um, actually the exercise is answered, but we are going to, to review a little in a bit. Uh, afterwards, both of them described the invisibility of being old. Carolyn was astonished to be ignored by some work women. 
asked who only hours before had been wolf whistling at her when she had been an attractive young woman. Nick said, I learned that how people treat you depends on how you look like. On one occasion, a bus driver threat treated him very rudely when he tried to pay his fare with a large note. I was amazed he wouldn't have talked like that to me, to my young self. Nick was also nearly robbed when he was taking money out of a cash machine. There is a point in the documentary when Carolyn breaks down and cries. It comes at the end of a day out with her two new pensioner friends, Betty and Sylvia, who she met at a day center. It is partly because she feels guilty that she's tricking them, but mainly because she realizes that they are individuals and not just members of what she had previously thought as the elderly. They were talking about real things and I felt unqualified. I didn't have the life experience. They had been through so much. It made me realize how ignorant I was. It was as if I was seeing the young people inside them. Before, I would just see them as wrinkles, or I would just have seen the wrinkles. At the start of the documentary, Carolyn uh, had said that old people scared her, and that in spite of loving her 86-year-old grandmother, who lives in a home, she had found it difficult to leave to visit her. Both she and Nick found making the program life-changing. Nick said, I'd never thought about getting old before. Carolyn said, the whole experience of living as an old person helped me to understand them far better and also to understand myself. One of the things that surprised me most was how important relationships still were to elderly people. I was shocked by the fact that older people could still have their hearts broken. After a while, I felt like one of them. I felt in a way that they were just young people in an old bodysuit trying to deal with the problems of old age. I'm not ready to be 73, but I'm not scared like I was. Guys, by reading the text and uh, looking and seeing their experiences, what do you feel? What do you feel about getting old? What do you feel about the experiences you have with people around you who are old? Do you see them as strange creatures? Are you scared of them? Are you scared of getting old? Do you think that older people don't, don't, don't have a life anymore? What do you think? Are they done? They can't have feelings. This is very weird, right? To see somebody say that, oh my God, look, they can have their heart broken. Like, of course they can. They're people. People can have broken hearts, right? What do you think? What's your opinion on the matter? Have you experienced something like that before? Okay. So now I want you to look at exercise E. This is very simple. We are going to look at the sentences and we are going to think back through the text or if you need, you can go back and check it out. Who says what? We have here nine sentences and we are going to use K for Carolyn, N for Nick or B for both. So look, at this point, I want you to pause the video, okay? Look through the sentences, answer, and then start back so we can check the answers, okay? Is that good? So let's see. Who found the physical preparation of their role very uncomfortable? We have both, right? Both Carolyn and Nick thought it was very comfortable, uncomfortable the suit, the makeup, and everything. Who was given classes on how to move like an elderly person? Both, correct? Both were coached on how to uh, behave as an elderly person. Who was surprised not to notice not to be noticed by people who had previously reacted to him or her. This is was Karen, do you agree? Remember that she said that the women at her work that were all over her before when she was old, they didn't even care and think she didn't exist and pretended she didn't exist? Who noticed that people were less polite to older people? 
we have Nick, right, at the bus with the bus driver who was rude to him about the big uh, bills. And that happens here too, right? We do have some people in the bus that are not very nice when you try to pay with bigger bills. Who found that playing the role of an older person made him or her more emotional? What do you think? Karen, right? She even cried because she um, was lying to the girl ladies, but also because she, she started noticing that they're also humans. Who realized that old people were very different from what he or she had previously imagined? Also Karen, right? Because she found out, surprise, surprise, if you're old, you're still a person. Oh my God, how would she know that? How could? Seven. That was Toby. Seven. Used to be frightened of old people. That was also Karen, right? She even says she wouldn't visit her grandma, who is 86 and lives in a nursing home. Who had never worried about what it would be like to be old? Nick, correct? And then finally, hadn't expected love and friendship to be so important. Guys, does love and friendship ever stop being important? Do you, do you stop caring about other people? Or do you stop loving and needing other people's love and attention? That's silly, right? Guys, this one I had answered because I had recorded this video before. And when I was on the last exercise, I tried to close the camera and accidentally closed everything. And there's no way to start from where I was. So I'm here recording it again. So guys, look, exercise F, we're going to look at the highlighted words throughout the text. Look, number one, three, two, number two, breaks down, B, E, through, number four, deal with, and five, to be ready. And we are going to um, find synonyms. What are synonyms to this word? So to be prepared is a synonym to be ready, correct? To behave towards others is how to treat you, to treat others. Experienced to being through. So I've been through a lot. I have experienced a lot. Loses control of his or her feelings. So when you break down, you start crying. You can control what you're feeling. And number four, uh, number four, deal with to solve a problem or a task. Do you agree? Yeah. Guys, look, how much control, contact do you normally have with elderly people? Do you think that they are treated well in your country? How do you think elderly people are here in Brazil? From your experience, from what we watch on the news, from what you see around you, um, are they treated with dignity? Are they loved? Or are they just like caring, old people with no feelings, expecting life to end at some time? What do you think? Today, and I would like you now to go to page 100 and um, 35. But before we do, let's do this one. We're going to look through sentences 1, A, B, and C, and 2, A, B, and C. And we're going to say, what do you think? Are they correct or are they wrong? So tick if they're right and cross if you think they're wrong. At this point, I want you to pause the video, read the sentences, and answer, okay? Once you're finished, come back and continue with me. So look, paused. Let's go, let's continue. The old have a harder life than the young. What do you think? Does it sound correct or is, does it sound incorrect? Sound, correct, right? The old. The old, in this case, it is working as a synonym to older people. The old people have a harder life than the young people. What do you think? It is incorrect in this case, right? Because we do not, look, can you see example C? We do not use the in front of nouns, old in um, adjectives. Old people have a harder life. Then in this case, it's correct, no the. Let's look at two. 
to A. The man was with a blonde, tall Swedish woman. What do you think? Does it sound correct? Yes or no? It is actually incorrect. The man was with a tall Swedish blonde woman. Tall Swedish blonde woman. This is correct. Sorry, guys. This is incorrect. The man was with a tall blonde Swedish woman. Now, this is correct. But teacher, why? That is crazy. Guys, when we are talking about adjectives in English, there is a specific order that we have to follow, okay? It's not just like, I want to throw all the words here and see what it works and see where it goes. No, there is a specific order. Let me show you here. Look, can you see? So, when we are talking about adjectives, we have a general order to follow. Am I going not to be understood if I do the other ways? No, of course not. You're going to be understood just fine. But grammatically speaking, it's incorrect. So look, opinion is the first, size, shape, condition, age, color, pattern, origin. Look, can we go back here? Look, the origin of the woman is the closest to the noun because it's the last thing we have here. Then we have the size, look, which is the first here, the size. And then we have, uh, what is it? The color? The color, which is blonde. So look, it respects a sequence. So origin, material, purpose and noun. If you take a look at your grammar bank on page 135, you also have this list there. Look. Oh, opinion, size, age, shape, color, pattern, origin, material, and noun. It's the same list as this one, but it's just a, with um, a few less options, okay? But it's still the same. So when we are uh, talking about adjectives, when we are uh, describing a person, re always remember there is an order for us to follow, okay? And also, guys, something else that is also important for you to um, pay attention at here is the fact that, remember that we saw there that the old people was like, but why can't we use that? Look here. Let me put this up. Where am I? Guys, where am I? Are you there? Okay, I'm back. Oh my gosh, sorry. Um, look here. You can use the plus some adjectives to talk about groups of people. So, nationalities and specific groups in society, the young, the old, the blind, the deaf. But in this case, guys, we're not talking about one person specifically. We are talking about people in general, okay? So everybody, okay. So, sorry, I had to pause for a second. Um, so we use uh, the two, to talk about specific groups, nationalities, so the British, the Japanese, the Irish, the French, okay? And to talk about specific groups. But look, guys, when I say the young, is already young people. So that's why in uh, the exercise, we do not put the in front of old people. It's the old or... Um, old people, okay? The old people, then it doesn't exist. Look here very quickly. We can use then nouns to work as adjectives as well. So look, they are going to respect the order. Remember that in English, the adjective comes before the noun. 
A noun working as an adjective is going to work exactly the same. Look, a soccer ball, a car race, a love story, same thing. In general, like adjectives, nouns being used as adjectives are used in the singular form. Okay, there are some exceptions, but normally we do not put the noun a soccer's ball, a car's race, a love's, okay? We can put uh, uh, what we are characterizing, but not the noun that is doing, giving the characteristic. We can have multiple uh, nouns as adjectives, okay? In that also, guys, is usually when you're speaking, it's normal to listen to two, three adjectives. It's not common to look at a long list of adjectives, okay? This is not very common in spoken language. And finally, we can use adjectives with nouns as adjectives. Look, a cute coffee mug, delectable Chinese cuisine, honest school teacher, okay? What I want you to do, guys, is to answer exercises A and B. Rewrite the underlined phrases using the plus adjective. So, people from Spain enjoy eating out. They Spanish. Okay? People from the Netherlands. You have here the Dutch, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? So on and so forth. Then, what you have to do here, the, for exercise B, is write the adjectives in brackets in the right place. So, do you remember here, we have the column, the table for the adjective orders, and you're just simply going to put them in the correct order, okay? We're going to check this during our life. Now, please go back to page 19, we have seen this. What we are going to do to uh, finish our lesson today is to do a listening activity. And this is where we were when I hit stop for accident, as an accident. Look, B. Listen to a radio program where two fashion journalists are talking about dressing your age. Do you agree that men and women should dress their age? Is, have you ever seen that? When you go out and you go like, oh my God, that is not age appropriate. And do you think that actually is correct? Or people have the freedom to dress as whatever. It's my body, my life, I can do. But we're going to, list to, to see what Lisa and Adrian's opinion on the matter are, okay? So pay attention and let's see. 1.45 Welcome to today's program in our series on age. The topic is clothes and the question is, do people nowadays dress their age and should they? Our guests are both fashion journalists with well-known magazines. Hello, Liza and Adrian. Hello. Hi. Let's start with you, Liza. Well, the first thing I'd like to say to all the young people out there is next time you give your granny a warm cardigan and some slippers for her birthday, don't be surprised if she asks for the receipt because <laughs> she'll probably want to go out and change them for something more exciting. <laughs> so you think nowadays women in their 60s and 70s dress much younger than they used to? Oh, absolutely. Think of women like Sophia Loren, uh, Catherine Deneuve, Helen Mirren and Jane Fonda. Mm. Jane Fonda is in her late 70s. And last month, she was on a US talk show wearing a leather miniskirt. <laughs> she looked fabulous. But of course, it isn't just famous women who are dressing younger. Some recent research says that nine out of 10 women say that they try to dress younger than their years. Do you think that's true? Well, it depends on your age, of course. A lot of teenage girls try to dress older than they are, maybe to get into pubs and bars. Mm. But I would say that from 30 onwards, most women try to dress younger than they are. And do you think there's anything wrong with that? Actually, I think it's not a question of dressing older or younger. It's a question of wearing what suits you. Mm. And if you looked good in jeans when you were 15, if you keep your figure, you'll probably look good in them when you're 80. <laughs> There are a few things which can look a bit ridiculous on an older woman, like, uh, let's see, very short shorts, <laughs> but not many. So your fashion rule would be? 
wear whatever you think suits you and makes you feel good. <laughs> Adrian, what about men? Do you think they also try to look younger than their age? Well, interestingly, in the research Liza mentioned, only 12% of the men who were questioned said they had ever thought about dressing to look younger. Yeah. But actually, I think a lot of them weren't telling the truth. <laughs> Look at all those middle-aged men you see wearing jeans which are too tight and incredibly bright t-shirts. You don't approve? No, I don't. Personally, I think that men should take their age into account when they're buying clothes. Do you think that some men actually dress older than their age? Yes, definitely, some do. Some men in their 20s look as if they were 20 years older by wearing blazers and chinos or wearing suits and ties all the time when they don't have to. <laughs> Maybe they've just started work and they want their bosses to take them more seriously. And a lot of men in their 30s realise that they can't dress like a teenager anymore. <laughs> but they go to the opposite extreme and they start buying the sort of clothes that their fathers wear. <laughs> so what would your fashion rule be for men? Dress for the age you are, not for the age you wish you were. <laughs> <laughs> Liza and Adrian, thank you very much. Okay, guys. So look, we've heard. Did you complete it? What were you able? So what, what where, whatever you think suits you and makes you feel good right? Did you complete with that? But Adrian doesn't have the same opinion as Liza, right? He thinks that you should dress for your age and not for dress for the age you are and not for the age you wish you were. Correct? So, dress for the age you are and not for the age you wish you were. Let me close this. If you feel it's necessary, listen to it again, okay? I'm not going to play it here because it's going to be too long. But you can rewind the video and play it one more time. Just for us to finish, guys, one, two things. Remember that everything that goes on your body that you wear, you wear on. So I wear makeup on my face, jewelry on my ears, so on and so forth. And just for us to finish, check, take a look at page 163, Grammar Bank. Uh, grammar Bank, uh, Vocabulary Bank. You have here clothing, uh, just how to describe clothing. So you have the fit which can be uh, loose, for example, like a sweatshirt maybe, and tight, like, well, actually two is, maybe this is loose and tight. We have hooded, which is number six. Look, it has a hood, that thing you put on your hair, your head. Long sleeves, like number four. We have sleeveless, which is, where are we? Here, number three. Guys, we can say sleeveless or tank top. It's the same. V-neck, the name already says it's a V. So number five, lose number two. Then we have patterns. Patterns are the details you have on the fabric. So look, checkered, number 11. Patterned, number nine. It's Plain, which has nothing, number seven. Spotted with polka dots, number 10. And then uh, striped, which is number eight. Okay, did you know those words? Did you know how to describe? And then here we also have, look, a few other uh, words, a few not other uh, piece of clothing, look. Sweat boots, which we have number 10. Leather sandals. Uh, wool cardigan, which is number two, right? A cardigan. Maybe, is that? A velvet bow tie, fancy. Do you wear velvet bow ties? A lycra swimming suit, 
Guys, when we are talking about swimming suit, we have one piece, which is this, like in, in Brazil and Portuguese, we say maio. In English, it's a one piece. And we have a bikini or two pieces, okay? A silk scarf, which is number eight. A lace top. Look, do you see here? Can you identify what lace is? It should be some something fancy, not very fancy, this one. A denim waistcoat, like a vest. What number is it? Nine. And then a, no, hold on. Where is the cotton vest? A linen suit, number one. And then a vest. So a cotton vest, number four, which I know as tank top. We've never heard this as cotton vest. It's probably British English. And the fur collar, which is number five, and we had skipped, right? So guys, this is it for today. Let's see, where can we go back? There, page. This is it for today. Uh, I hope to see you during our lives. Please do the activity so we can correct and we can also talk about all the things that I have uh, asked and the book has suggested. Okay, I'll see you all. Um, I'll see you all very soon or not, but hopefully. Take care and see you later. Bye bye, guys.